hundred trillion dollars. They just keep on saddling up the fines. And you know what? The eighty three million dollars, that's not going to make a difference once they once they take these buildings. Man, is New York City coming after this guy? And firstly, off the bat, I just want to know, what is New York City doing to uh, protect us from known sexual assaulters? Because here we have, we've got the court system, and apparently we've got sexual assaulters just mingling amongst us out in the wild with absolutely no reform whatsoever to try and find these people criminally accountable. I don't know. Do you feel safe in New York City? I don't feel safe in New York City anymore. This is the, what is this going to do to the economy as our court system recognizes the fact that we've got vicious sexual assaulters out there on the loose. And now here's what Donald Trump should do. I figured out what he should do at eighty three million dollars. And he's not allowed to talk about this. How rough is that? It shows up in the debates and they go, well, uh, you know, you sexually assault and he's got a And, you know, Donald Trump left that court case and he goes, I don't understand. I was under breathing the whole time. I sat in there. I made I made angry faces at the judge and I kept saying I didn't do it. I kept saying it. I know I wasn't supposed to say it, but I showed up. I let them know it was a witch hunt. I don't know how the jury could have decided against me. I was there saying not me. Totally didn't do it. It must have been someone else. And that's what his defense should be. You know what he should do at eighty three million dollars to clear his name. He should just hire someone to go. Yep, that was me. Back in the day, I used to hang out in Bergdorf Astoria. Uh, 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 I don't know what the name of the fancy store is. I'd get off my shift from the McDonald's. I'd go right over there, and I'd be fingering all sorts of bitches. You just got to hire some dude who's tall, get him to start wearing those long coats, throw the whatever horse hair wig you get from, tan the guy a little bit, and have him just show up and go, it was me. And then for $83 million, you can even try, you can even hire women to come out and go, yeah, that was me too. Listen, this was pre-Craigslist. Do any of us know what the Bergdorf Astoria room was like? You know, we're all out here going, hey, this story doesn't sound like it's possible. You're telling me that in the middle of the day, you guys were actually able to pull this off in a dressing room at some high-end retail shop? But wait, maybe this was New York City's glory hole for all we know. Maybe this lady is claiming sexual assault, but this would have been like being at a trucker stop in the 90s and being, oh my God, a dick came through the hole in the wall. So I don't know, Donald Trump, if you're listening, I like to throw out suggestions. I like to solve people's problems. And uh, my newest suggestion for you is just hire someone to come forward, pull the OJ move of we're out there, we're trying to find the real killer. And you go, it was, you get the other guy to just come forward and go, yeah, it was me. And she can't even remember what year it happened in. So what, what, how is the New York state going to argue with someone else coming forward and going, yep, that was me. Uh, I'd like to know how Clinton is in the clear. How is it that Donald Trump is going down for this one, but Clinton seems to be in the clear? Is it just that Clinton is smart enough not to respond to allegations or that they don't do Clinton as dirty and that you never see just people on the news all the time going, yep, I was right by Clinton. You never see that. And I guess if you did see that all the time, maybe the Clinton organization would be forced to come forward and then they'd get trapped in in, uh, in one of these defamation lawsuits again, uh, as well, uh, assuming that someone could pull a move where they just bring it down to Texas. Because that's the whole other thing is just the jury here. The jury gets to assign punitive damages. And how fun is that to punish a politician? Do, these, do, do the jury not realize that they're not getting the money? But I guess it's fun. If you're just some poor schmuck, and for a brief moment in time, you get to lord over a politician. I'm kind of stealing his joke from Dave Smith there. He did this on the, uh, uh, he did, he said something similar on the live podcast, which why you got to come out for the live one sometimes. Sometimes it gets so juicy and dicey. We just look at each other and go, yep, that was for the hundred people that were here and those people only. Sometimes it's 300 people. Depends on the setting. But show up for the live shows because uh, sometimes they get too spicy to go out. And then I get to steal Dave's jokes and do them on Run Your Mouth. But isn't that fun to be on a jury and just get to lord over a politician for two minutes and go, you know what? Make it a billion dollars. Just take all of his money. Do I really get to sit here and just decide that we're going to take Donald Trump's money? I don't even care if I can't have it. That's just a fun decision to make. All right. So to recap the case for people that didn't follow it, uh, first is Gene Carroll, from what I remember, it seems like they're changing the story here. Now everyone's uh, like saying that she accused him of sexual assault. That's not what I remember. She accused him of rape. And I guess she lied about that because she did not actually, even the jury decided she wasn't raped. And then, of course, in New York City, they go, well, uh, she was uh, finger blasted. And that's uh, technically not rape in New York City. But that is, according to most people, consider this stuff is gross, confusing. We don't have to get into logistics of what's rape and what's not. I'm just saying she did claim rape. And then it turned out at least it wasn't that. She doesn't remember what year it took place in. Um, and 
Once again, if Donald Trump is a rapist, let's put the guy in jail. Why does he just get to walk around amongst us and run for president? And what would happen if there was a counterclaim in another state? If this was down in Texas or if this was down in Florida? What does that say about our jury system? This was very similar to uh, the the um, you guys should watch. I've talked about it on the show before when there was that guy, uh, Tucker Carlson interviewed him. He was the dude who tweeted uh, that you could text in your vote and then ended up, uh, I believe he's going to jail. I don't know if he's in jail yet, but he was talking about the jury that the Feds can just bring you into court in a very liberal area in Brooklyn. They get some other guy to turn against you. And it's like, if they can rig juries like that, we're all going to be found guilty. I don't understand why this court case, if the guy made the claims while he was president, shouldn't, why, why is it being brought into court in New York? And if Donald Trump's got so much money for lawyers, how is he getting suckered into this game that he can't bring, uh, that he can't force it to be brought into other um, jurisdictions? Um, all right. And so just a few more little pieces of information on this case, and then we'll get into some more of the news articles, spicy news story over here of the guy trying to run for president being slammed once again with an 83 million, that, even that's got to hurt Donald Trump. Even he's got to be sitting around and going at $83 million. Every time I go, I didn't do it. I, I you know what? Maybe it's just going to, I so did it. Okay. I don't want to owe any more money. All right, fine. You guys say, you know, say I was doing it. Yes. I was that cool in the eighties. Everyone else was doing blow middle of the afternoon. I went in my rush. I went to Bergdorf. Let me tell you, everyone else liked it. Everyone else had a really good time. That's why you don't hear any other complaints. <laughs> but anyways, trying to move forward. Gene Carroll, uh, you know, firstly, I, I mean, talk about, and this was actually part of the Donald Trump defense, but don't you want this lady's advice now for an advice columnist? I mean, how to screw men out of their money. Talk about an advice column I will read now. You know, the book that she wrote was, what do we need men for? And it's apparently so that you can sue them. And now here's the thing. I don't want to call Gene Carroll a liar. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be calling her a liar. I can't afford lawsuits over here, defamation cases. So, you know, let's just say that she's uh, not lying. She's just using chief lady habits for maximum financial gain. She can become the absolute world's greatest spokesman for how to turn victimhood into profits. I mean, what a case. What a case. Who schemed this one up? Who realized, hey, and I, I was reading this article about how they changed a whole bunch of New York laws so that this court could be uh, could uh, um, could even be uh, brought. But this seems like a checkmate. Make a claim 30, 40 years ago. Then you get the guy for defamation for saying it's not true. And then every time he opens up his mouth, you get to sue him once again. It's pretty good. All right. Benjil's coming in, wanting to know how many bagels and locks buy me an invite to the tunnels. Um, a good platter of locks is going to get you into any Jewish party. You, you don't need that much, especially, but it's got to be like high end. You know what I mean? It's, and locks is sketchy. You know what your best bet is? You really want to, I'll tell you a Jew secret. You got to go to a Costco and get one of those, uh, smoked, uh, white fishes that's in the packaging. So that way everyone knows the quality. Everyone knows what's on the table. And, uh, even if you're bringing bagels, you know, that's coming in a sack, right? If you're coming because you want to try and get into the Jew tunnels, whatever you've got on hand, people are going to be skeptical of it. They're going to want to know if you poisoned it, you're trying to put sleeping pills in it so you can pull them out of the tunnels. People are very protective when they're in tunnels. Now they like people coming, hanging out, bringing them the Jew foods that they like to eat, but you got to bring things that are jarred. You want to bring herring in a jar and high end herring. No one likes the bad herring. I don't like herring no matter what, but I'm, I've just been around these people at Kiddish and I'm just trying to relay the information to you. If you're trying to trap, if you're trying to get an invite to Jew tunnels, um, you're going to have to make sure that it is sealed food. They're very careful about the kosher thing. And so what I would recommend is go to Costco. You can get yourself locks, but I'm telling you, you know what, you know what people are really going to go crazy for is that Costco whitefish. You know, have you guys ever had that? I don't even like fish, generally speaking. I'll, I'll eat lox, but you get one of those smoked Costco's white fishes, and they're only good once you open it. Like, you open that thing up, and that's good for, like, 15, 20, 30 minutes. If you try and go back for the leftovers on that one, it's no good. And generally speaking, I do like leftovers. Thank you, Benjels. That was an excellent question um, and really uh, shed some additional light onto this uh, Gene Carroll story. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at some of the articles um, so this was after $80 million verdict, Trump has jury problem ahead of criminal trial. That was the verdict. Now, this was the first defense, because this is what I was uh, catching eye to. 
was that you got Jean Carroll. And it, it, to me, I was like, well, isn't she a known liar because she claimed rape? And then suddenly every single news story pivoted to sexual assault as if that had always been her initial claim was that it was sexual assault and that she was always true and right. And the jury just listened to her story and said that was true. I was like, wait a second. Didn't she lie to us because she did say rape? They didn't determine rape. They determined sexual assault. And then how do you have this whole defamation thing with a person who you know is a known liar by the very court that even decided in her favor? Gets a little uh, gets a little bit confusing here. But then I was reading the new articles. They're all trying to pretend like her initial claim was sexual assault, which is not the way I remembered it. So here's a couple articles on that. The former president then countersued Carol for defamation over a CNN appearance of her own. Hours before Trump's town hall, Carol indicated he raped her, despite the jury finding that he was only liable for sexual abuse, not rape, under New York's definitions. Kaplan, the judge, tossed Trump's counterclaim, ruling it was merely a legal technicality that bore no distinction when average person describes rape. Here's a different article. Discussing the counterclaim, Judge Kaplan provided an unsparring analysis of the legal issues that informed the New York verdict. He wrote, the only issue on which the jury did not find in Mrs. Carroll's favor was whether she was proved that Mr. Trump raped her within the narrow technical meaning of that term in New York penal law. Your judge, laws are very technical. And in this case, you go, uh, she, I don't know. The jury was instructed that it could find that Mr. Trump raced, raped Mr. Carroll only if he... Um, only if it found that he forcibly penetrated Miss Carroll's vagina with his penis. Always fun when you put it in very uh, technical terms like that. Uh, now, the next move from Donald Trump, I believe this was from the New York Post, in trying to get this case uh, thrown out of court, which uh, I guess if you got enough lawyers, I don't know why. Is it three strikes and you're out? Is that the way it works? You get to, you know, uh, you get they, they bring the court case. It, it and then you appeal it. Is there a limit to how many times you can appeal a court case? How does that work? Or if you're wealthy enough, you just get to keep on appealing it because with $83 million on the table, I'm sure your legal fees of constantly appealing it. And then it, between now and the next appeal, can he keep saying, Hey, it never happened. And then that's just still a part of the whole case. So it's better to delay all the cases or is it a new case every single time he says it doesn't happen? I don't know. I don't know the way that one works either. But anyways, the newest one is that they're trying to say that there was a previously unknown conflict of interest as the judge was actually the mentor for the prosecutor against Donald Trump in this case. Uh, it doesn't sound like a bombshell to me. The fact that you worked in an office with someone 30 years ago, maybe were on their team or not on their team, doesn't sound like a bombshell conflict of interest to me. I think the conflict of interest is just the fact that uh, you're, you're, you're being confronted by a New York City uh, jury pool, for one. And for two, that you can't even defend yourself against the actions, and it can just be a court case about um, how much are the damages. All right, let's take a let's take a look at one more article. This one was interesting. This is from Business Insider. Here, I'll read you guys the headline: Trump claimed his E. Jean Carroll defamations were the best thing that ever happened to her. Here's how that grotesque tactic met its end. And the argument actually makes sense to me. Where's the defamation if I've highlighted this person to being even more famous where they make a lot more money and uh, now they're a cultural icon because they're the person who's uh, bringing down Donald Trump? If her book sales are up, if she's got more job opportunities, if her profile has been heightened, if the New York state has already labeled me to be a liar because of this, and then every time I bring her up, she's getting the free publicity. I mean, this is very Donald Trump logic, you know, that all press is good press, but there's something to be said for it. If you're actually making more money, off of the fame that the case has brought to you, then what exactly are the damages from the defamation if all the defamation is actually in your favor? Interesting to me. I buy it. Jury in New York didn't. And then Carol promises to do something good with a fortune one from Trump, which is hopefully she just spends it on more lawsuits, just constant Donald Trump lawsuits. Or maybe she can find some Clinton victims. Maybe she could say she could fund lawsuits for everybody. Maybe she can make a whole Ponzi scheme here of who, who can come forward and claim something happened 30 years ago, because don't worry, there won't be any criminal repercussions. So you, you don't have to feel bad about this. It's not like anyone's going to jail. Just uh, let me fund this so you can make yourself some money. Uh, all right. Before we take the get into the next topic, let's take a couple of comments here. When are we going to have a fight between Jewish haters who say Hitler killed six million and those who said he did nothing wrong? I don't think anyone says he did nothing wrong think you're uh, distorting that one. I think even people, uh, 